How's everyone doing? Welcome to Refresh. I'm so happy to be together today to value this time. You know, we have this time to connect, to be inspired, to learn something, and ultimately feel just a bit better for this time spent together. After all, as you know, this is what Generation W is all about. So, it's not a major pronouncement, but I am kind of freaked out about it. Today is December 1st. It's the fourth night of Hanukkah, an early arrival for the Jewish Festival of Lights and the spirit of Thanksgiving remains. I don't know. I, I think everyone I talk to talks about how much they love Thanksgiving because I think we're grateful that we've progressed as we have. I know that many of us are still a bit tentative about being in crowds and there are many who have finally been able to hug their family and friends in a way that has elevated the hug to a superpower activity. I, I know when I hugged my uncle, I just didn't want to let him go. I finally made it to my homeland, New York, after 19 months. And to see my cousins, my family, some of my friends, it truly was wow. And I'm sure many of you have had that experience as well. And then how many of you have had that meeting people that you've only been in contact with through Zoom for the first time? In one of my meetings, there was Danny and I'm looking at him and I'm talking to him. And I realized like I, I had never seen him in the physical flesh before. He looked a little younger and it was kind of like this metaverse experience as we're all talking about the metaverse. Like he only lived in the metaverse. Now he was in real life and it was really cool. But I have to say it's a little offsetting because I'm not sure when I meet people like, have I met you before or are you my metaverse friend, right? The new variant is yet a new bump in the road. It is maddening on this road of two steps forward and one step back, you know, although some of the dance moves, um, you know, how many steps forward and back continue to change. I feel that, oh, let me ask you, aren't we better prepared to dance in the age of, in, of an inert virus? Remember, it's an inert thing whose sole focus is to find a way to more than survive, but to thrive that we are its host in this battle of thriving should keep us diligent in keeping not only ourselves safe and whatever that means, right? Vaccinations, masks, distancing. You think we don't need it, but clearly, remember, this is not personal. It's this thing that all it wants to do is survive. If we give it the opportunity, guess what? That's what it does. Hmm. And so therefore keeping ourselves safe but also recognizing that we're a, a joint organism, right? Even though Sherry, I, and Heather, and Don are in different cities, we are comprised a joint organism. We're a collective living and breathing thing, right? That lives right, right alongside each other. And it's the beauty of being social beings and driving the connectivity that comes with community that we are experiencing what we're experiencing. So all I say is let's continue to keep it upbeat. Let's navigate it the best that we can. And today, no surprise, we have two guests who are providing us really good da -da -da -da, food for thought. I have to say, I really like that. <laughs> At this time of year, when we tend to both overindulge and also seek to indulge our fantasies of being healthy and well, as we are surrounded by lusciousness on our tables or wherever we go. In my trip to New York, I, I can... Every store window seemed to say, come in and eat this incredibly oversized 4,000 cut 4,000 calorie cupcake. Or, oh my God, I fell for cheese Danish. I I am indulging myself thinking I can do better, but today Dawn and Heather are gonna tell us how we can do better. They're gonna share some great insights, practical tips, and yes, delicious recipes as we celebrate this special time of year that challenges us to be our best. Uh, yes, we will be continually grateful, but also a reminder that we need to take care of ourselves. So Heather. Yes. Welcome. Hello. Thank you. Dawn, welcome. Hi. Let's start off by, uh, um, I thought it would be best if you guys just tell us in you know, a short little way, a little bit about your story, right? So uh, Heather, let's start with you. Yeah, sure. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I am currently a registered dietitian, but I did not start out that way. I like to say I'm a recovering engineer. And uh, so basically, I was trucking along working for a medical device company, and my husband's cholesterol just went through the roof. And we're young and fit and thin, and it just didn't make sense. 
And my husband to boot wanted to nothing to do with cholesterol medicine. So um, I started doing some research. Uh, at that time, I didn't have a nutrition background. And we just saw how much nutrition was going to play a role in this, even though the doctor didn't mention it. And uh, we made a hard right and changed our diet and his cholesterol plummeted. So within six weeks, his uh, cholesterol dropped 80 points and, with, um, and his triglycerides dropped 200 points. So that really kickstarted me to learn more about food and nutrition. I started doing cooking classes and this is about 10 years ago. And just from these dinky little four to five week cooking classes, people were telling me that their cholesterol, excuse me, their blood pressure was dropping, their glucose was dropping and their weight was dropping. And they would have questions that I couldn't answer because I didn't have the background. And that's what drove me to go back to school in 2013 to become a dietitian. And so I've been a dietitian since 2016. I have a strong culinary focus. I counsel patients. Um, I do um, personal chef services right now in people's homes. And I'm really excited to kick off some courses, online courses as well, going into 2022. Um, but I take an add-in approach and I know a lot of that we're gonna get into today. Absolutely. And that's fascinating. I have lots of questions for you on that whole story. But first, let's hear from Dawn. Hi, Dawn. Welcome to Refresh. Hi. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here. Um, so my background, I did grow up with a little bit of a nutrition background. My grandmother practiced a macrobiotic diet and was a master herbalist. And um, I really got into, after graduating, I graduated from FSU and um, I had a 13 year career in corporate finance. So a little like Heather, I had a little bit, even though I had nutrition in my background and a passion for it. Um, I ended up going into corporate finance for about 13 years. And, um, there were two events that really happened that pushed me towards doing this full time. One of them was that my daughter had an autoimmune issue so she was getting chronic ear infections and had almost bloody eczema. Her eyelids would bleed. It was horrible. And I couldn't figure out, we were going on third set of ear tubes. And I told the doctors that obviously what it was going on wasn't working. Um, so that was one thing that pushed me into why are all these kids having food allergies? Why are all these kids having ear infections amongst many other things? And then something else happened. Um, I had really started with going everything, um, going through everything with my daughter. I kind of started reading more about plant-based nutrition. Um, I came across a book called the China study. And around that time, I was telling my dad about all of these things I had found out about, and he was ex-military. Um, so he was very fit. He kind of kept that willpower to work out um, into his later years. And so he had left the military, went into, um, corporate environment. And on the day he decided to retire, he rode his bike up to the pool to swim laps, um, and lift weights on his lunch break. And he had a massive heart attack and ended up drowning in the pool. And we didn't even know he had heart disease. And he was not the kind of person that avoided the doctor. So this was seemingly out of the blue and he was eating sort of a, like a ketogenic style diet. Um, and so he really didn't want to learn much about plant-based because he was really passionate about what he was doing. And so I continued to change my diet. I lost weight. I, um, had been dealing with a lot of depression. And so the depression went away. And then when I changed my daughter's diet, not, she actually had an ear infection the time I changed her diet and they were going on the third set of ear tubes. And not only did she, we got rid of the ear infection. She never had an ear infection ever again. And we've really never had to deal with any, we got the food allergies under control. So to this day, she eats mostly a plant-based diet. I mean, it's hard being a teenager um, in today's world when you're the only one eating that way, but um, that's kind of my story of how I went that direction. And so I started veggie cooking. 
Um, I teach plant-based cooking classes and lifestyle. Um, I went back and got my certificate in plant-based nutrition through Cornell um, and the T. Colin Campbell Foundation, and then um, got certified in nutritional therapy with a focus in epigenetics. So I'm really passionate about um, helping people learn really the culinary side is the point that I'm at. Explain epigenetics quickly. Epigenetics means that it's uh, an emerging science. The epigenome wraps around our DNA and it basically tells us that what we eat and how we live affect the expression of our genes. So historically, I obviously have heart disease in my background. That is not necessarily my fate because of how I'm living my lifestyle. I got it. I got it. My doctor says that to me too. So let me, the theme I hear from both of you, um, which I find incredibly compelling is that food is medicine, right? I mean, that's what, you know, Heather, why would your husband not take cholesterol medicine? Why did he say, listen, I'm not doing, and why did you jump in to help him? Because my mother tells me she's not going to take medicine all the time. And I'm like, mom, you have to take it. I mean, She's at the, another end of the life spectrum, but tell me about that. Yeah. I mean, at that time I didn't know anything. And so it was definitely, you know, curious to me why he was so adamant against it, but I get it now. And, you know, he may not have known the scientific reasons or have a, a scientific basis for why he was wanting to move in that direction, but knowing what I know now, um, the way I look at it now is if you have, you have options, we have all, we all have options. And if we can address health issues in ways where the cost benefit makes more sense in one way, say like with food or exercise or self-care, you know, that's going to make more sense than choosing like a pill or procedure that comes with way more cost um, than the benefit that it has. And the other thing too is, is, Procedures and pills don't cure. They don't reverse um, chronic disease. They just treat the symptoms. So it's like having your check engine light on and snipping the little cord that makes the light go on. So now you you may not have the light on, but that doesn't mean you fix the the reason why that check engine light is on. Mm -hmm. So um, it's very clear that if someone wants to use a lifestyle medicine as a way to heal and reverse disease, that is an option for them. Wow. And, um, and Dawn, your experience is simple. I was a grandmother who was an herbalist. Tell me, what did you learn about herbs? I grow a lot of them. Mm-hmm. I don't know how to keep them all or utilize them, but I am fascinated by it all. So she um, started actually doing macrobiotics and she lived in Massachusetts and studied under the father of macrobiotics, Misho Kushi, who was actually in um, Boston, I believe at that time. And my grandfather had ALS. And so she really got into the herbalism and the macrobiotics to um, help him deal with the ALS or Lou Gehrig's disease, as some people know it as. Um, and so the normal life expectancy is five, was five years. I don't know what it is now, but, um, he lived for 25 years with that, um, disease. And my grandmother was even interviewed by Harvard medical about her naturopathic practices, but she, I remember she always, um, she could go outside and look for wild herbs that were growing and she would use some to heal wounds. My grandfather would sometimes fall and would get these big wounds that needed to be healed. And so she would use comfrey. Um, And she would um, have all of these journals and um, just really learn to use herbs more for healing than a lot of the pharmaceuticals. They just work differently. And the side effects aren't there like you have with pharmaceuticals. So um, sometimes they may take a little longer, but you're not really getting all those side effects. No, and that's true. I, I, I literally, I have this discussion with my mother almost every day. Um, but I, I also feel like everybody's body's different and how they react. Yes. But my yes. personal experience was when I took the time to eat really well and right on a plant-based diet, I, my body loved it, just loved it. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. I, it's hard for me to do. So I'm going to have to 
I'm going to have to invite you both over to help me. I'm going to have to have you both as my personal guide here. Anybody? We should. Okay. We should do a cooking demo. That would be great. I would love to do that. (laughs) Deb, Emmy, Joy, Kirsten, Tiff. Nice to see you. If if anybody has any questions out there in Facebook land, please forward them along. I would love to have them. Uh, you, You came up with some guides for us because it is the holiday season. I know we all are tempted to more than um, more than tempted. We eat more during this period of time. Like it's hard to resist. So Sherry, why don't we take, begin to take a look here of like some of the ideas and why don't we add some dimension to what's going on? All right, all right. and I, you know, I'll, I'll leave it to you. Figure out your why. Tell us what that means. Uh, so I'll kick start it and um, you know, I think as always, I'm sure that we've all heard of SMART goals. Um, and so we really need to understand what it is, why, why we're doing, why we're making decisions to do anything. So first I would say, what are your goals? And then what is, it kind of pairs together the first two ones. So what are your goals? What do you hope to accomplish? Use those SMART goals. And why is it important? And I always tell my clients, this is the why that makes you cry. So someone may say, I want to lose weight but that's not their why. And so some of the questions that someone may run through with themselves and try to answer would be, if I achieve my goals, what do I hope to accomplish? What is gonna be different about my life? How is my life going to be better if I accomplish these goals? Or what um, is going to be worse about my life if I don't accomplish these goals? So, you know, it's really important to understand why accomplishing these goals are important to you. If we don't have that North Star, it's going to be really hard to make those decisions to zig versus zag and the time in which, you know, we're tired and we don't want to and et cetera. Okay. Um, Focusing on adding foods, I mean, Don, as opposed to cutting foods out over the holiday. So it's, it looks to me like a plus here can equal a minus, uh, but we have this right plus there, right? So what's yeah. that all about? Right. And I think Heather and I both agree on this, that um, if we really focus, especially on the holidays, it's, it's going to be really hard to cut foods out because everybody's going to have their traditional foods that they want to eat comfort foods, things like that. So if we could focus on what we're adding in over the holidays, so not only are you adding in the nutrition, you're going to say if you add um, a brothy soup or uh, so that's a low calorie kind of a brothy soup that can still be a comfort food, especially in the cold weather and around the holidays or a fresh salad with a low calorie dressing. So we're not necessarily loading it up with a bunch of ranch or anything, but kind of focusing on something really light that can actually displace 20% of your calories in the following meal. And you're getting all the nutrition that rides along with that. Um, And I actually thought of another one today that I do a lot, especially now as it gets cooler and over the holidays. And I hadn't mentioned this before, but I love drinking hot tea, herbal tea, And sometimes I'm really thinking, man, I'd love to have a glass of wine right now, but instead I'm going to have one nice warm cup of hot tea. And then I don't even necessarily want to have the extra glass of wine. Um, And so I just, maybe if I don't, sometimes I don't even put any little bit of honey in it or some maple syrup or something like that. I just like to have it plain, but um, yeah. And I find it super nice in the cold weather. I, I, uh, I'm with you on that mint tea. Nothing's yes. I drink Love it all day long. Are there special herb, herbal teas that impact our bodies in different ways that either one of you would recommend? When I went to this like spa place, they literally had a bar filled with teas and they used mm-hmm. them as medicines. Like, okay, this meal, you're going to get this. And most of the teas I'd never heard of. You're going to get this tea and this tea. And at lunch, you get this tea and this tea. And at night, mm-hmm. my favorite tea was after dinner because you didn't get any sugar and I craved sugar. They'd always give us an apple tea, which oh. at that point felt so sweet. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was our treat. Apple tea was our treat. But anyway. So, any- yes, I would say, so I have a lavender tea that I love at night. Lavender is very calming. Um, I think if I have an upset stomach, 
doing a peppermint tea, which I could drink peppermint tea all day. And in the summer, I just put a tea bag in cold water and put it in the refrigerator. I don't even heat the water up and it makes kind of an iced tea. Um, I do a chamomile tea is very calming. Um, so, and then if you have a ginger and turmeric is an anti-inflammatory. So if you've got feeling inflamed or if you have some joint issues, um, a ginger and turmeric tea may help. And um, Trader Joe's actually has a bunch of those. And if you're wanting sort of a local to sort of support a local company that has some great blended teas, I know when over at House of Leaf and Bean, which is off of, I think, Beach Boulevard, she has all kinds of really great teas as well. Oh, that's interesting. And Joy mentioned here Republic of Tea. Ginger, mm. and ginger and peach is one of her favorites regular i tea. love republic of tea yes that's, that's really funny uh don because i was just typing into the chat so that people can find it but uh when rady has a, a phd in uh tea, tea and so uh i would definitely recommend going to house of leaf and bean because she is definitely the tea expert here in jacksonville yes oh well i'm writing that down to you because I happen to be there. Any of our guests aren't, but I, um, I'm going to write that down anyway. And I assume that every market has some specialist, right? Somebody that they can connect with around this. Now, um, hey, Sherry, if you want to put up the thing on food and mood, this is like, again, extending this discussion that we're having about food as medicine. And, and while you do that, well, that wasn't the one I was thinking, Sherry, but okay. Yeah, yeah, the other one. There you go. Um, again, when you, what foods eliminated cholesterol, what made his, what made his. So there's a few things. Um, first is going to be your added fiber. Um, that's going to be very helpful. Um, it, uh, basically your insoluble fiber kind of helps, as I say, it's like an, a moving experience. So it keeps things moving. Um, soluble fiber that's going to help with cholesterol. And um, it just keeps things moving. That is, that's a big one. Um, our liver okay, makes okay, it. Okay, I always love when dietitians they say, all right, you need to eat fiber. Like, what right. does that mean? Yeah, yeah. very good question. So um, all plant foods have fiber. Um, you're going, I have seen pretty remarkable results with just your basic oatmeal. Um, but the reality is, is if you're eating fruits, any fruit, any vegetable, beans, and whole grains, such as uh, brown rice, quinoa, farro, oats, anything like that, all of those things are going to be incredibly helpful in bringing down your cholesterol. Um, our liver makes all the cholesterol we need. So the only foods that we consume that would add cholesterol to our body is going to be animal-based protein. So um, I would say at the top of the list, your eggs are going to be, especially the, um, the yolk is going to have a lot of cholesterol and, um, and just keeping the rest of the animal protein to a minimum. And what's really interesting that most people don't realize is that shellfish and fish have just as much, if not more cholesterol than say like beef. So a lot of people think they're doing themselves a favor by moving to chicken and fish. And just, you know, if we keep it the same, there may not be an issue, but if they start increasing the amount of chicken and fish that they're consuming, that may just very well be enough to drive up cholesterol. Um, and then I get a lot of people who eat one or two eggs a day, and that also can keep, you know, cholesterol high. I've seen someone who I consider have a very, very pure, mostly plant-based diet struggle with a little bit of high cholesterol, and they switched from a very popular cereal brand that's touted as healthy. I'm not going to out them, but it's very touted as healthy. And they switched from that to oatmeal and their cholesterol plummeted. Oh, wait, you got to out them. We got to know. We might be on it. You have to save us. Save us. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you know, it's, it's uh, you know, it's, it's, the point is, is that all cereals, they have minimal fiber. That's the point. Cereal grains are not the whole grains. We can't find you know, flakes and Cheerios out on trees. It just, that's not how they grow, 
right? I want, I want the Cheerio tree. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. So, you know, if your cholesterol is fine, then it may not matter. But this particular client really wanted to drop his cholesterol and, and that kind of thing was not working for them. So the biggest deal, I'd say, again, the first step is to add in those plants, like if, take an evaluation of where we can find more to add in. Do that for three months very religiously and deliberately and meaningfully. And if that doesn't work, then we may need to look at some of the other foods that we're consuming that may need to be decreased. Okay, well, that makes that makes a whole lot of sense. Now, Deb Levy, who was our positive, uh, our positive psychology guru, who will be with us next week, actually offered a great question. Again, in this connecting mood to food, symptomology to food, what is the best diet? Uh oh, Sherry, I hate when that happens. Not your fault, but here it is. I need, okay, no, there it was. It's so funny. What, no, no, it's okay that you did that. What happens when you do it? it? My screen goes away. Then I have to go find it again. And I found it. Okay. Deb wants to know what's the best diet to help people reduce stress and depression? Oh, I love it. I love it. Um, okay. So, first of all, if we haven't heard already, a lot of our, our, um, happy feelings are, are tr neurotransmitters. They're built in the gut, okay? And so a lot of our, our brain health starts in the gut. And um, really what depression is, is inflammation of the brain and brain cells. And a lot of those plant foods are high in antioxidants and these plant-based chemicals that repair the damage and decrease inflammation in those brain cells. So everything we just talked about that's healthy for addressing cholesterol issues, anything for weight loss, anything for heart health is going to help with the brain. And so, um, again, it's going to be generic to plants, but in particular, you know, dark leafy greens, like bright uh, berries, grapes, things like that. I know sometimes green tea can help, but I know that it needs to be a whole, you know, effort here. Um, and then I'll just add in, you know, that's going to help because it's going to help with um, increasing the amount of serotonin, dopamine, norepinephrine, all of that in the brain. But then just know that sometimes for some people, this fat that's found in all animal products to some varying degrees, that is going to start off a cascade of chemical reactions in the body that may lead to depression and anxiety. So it is, you know, that's part of it. Now I want to be, I'm not naive that nutrition is the only part of it. You know, I think self-care, focusing on sleep, you know, getting in some, some kind of movement to your day, some kind of meditation or stretching is, is going to be the round it all out. Okay. I, I, you know, it's funny. I'm, look, I'm look, also looking to see my dogs are sleeping behind me and they basically have a, a meat diet. I'm wondering whether they're depressed. <laughs> we're gonna have to definitely do a a animal focus a different animal focus show girls that well anyway so all right so plant so you're saying that meat eating meat now doesn't it matter about everybody's own personal biome gut like dawn doesn't it matter individually how your body's going to react to some of these foods i i think from personal experience that I, that yes, everybody's different. Everybody's going to need varying levels of different things. But what we want to be careful of is that we don't take a reductionist approach where we say, um, well, I need more and focus on the macros. I need more carbs or I need more protein or I need more this, or I need more that it's, I think really, if you're worried about if you're missing any kind of um, vitamins or nutrients, maybe going and seeing a dietitian and getting your blood work done. Um, but otherwise, eating a whole food plant-based diet is going to really fit a, a lot of people. Um, and you know, what's funny is I've heard about the blood type diet and I am O, so that would mean I should be eating a lot of meat. And so I always think some of these diets are kind of funny because, um, you know, I've been doing this for probably 13, going on 13 years, 10, between 10 to 13 years. I don't know. It's been a long time. 
And, um, I feel amazing. I have more energy. I feel great. And as I've met more people that have done this type of lifestyle, this is, I hate to say diet, this is a lifestyle. It helps such a wide variety of things. So between the depression, the heart disease, cancer, certain types of cancers, diabetes, there are just so many that my mom has MS. Yeah. Um, helps with the symptoms of MS. So even though every bo- everyone's body is different, I feel like the motto of my company is learn to cook, love your veggies. Everyone can benefit from adding more veggies in no matter what your microbiome is like, no matter what your body composition is like. Everyone can benefit by adding more fiber, fruits and vegetables. Well, okay. Well, so, so Joy has a really good question, but if you're doing a plant-based diet, uh, do you need supplements such as B12 and other things? I mean, do you truly get all of the nutrients that you need, Heather, when you have a fully plant-based diet? So yes, if you are eating a wide variety, so a lot of times people tend to focus on one particular thing. Um, or two, and they leave out something else. So I get like a lot of people who eat a lot of fruits and vegetables, but maybe they're not eating a lot of whole grains or beans. And that's not complete. Like we need to eat all of those food groups and we do need to get all of our um, calories. So, so long as we're getting enough calories spread across all the food groups, then yes, you should be fine. Um, with B12, I would get it checked. Um, I would get it checked annually and B12 is about the only uh, supplement I would say you're not going to really hurt yourself with if you supplement and technically don't need it. It's a water soluble vitamin. So you're just going to urinate it out if you don't need, if you're taking too much, but um, you know, if you can get it checked and then you can supplement with B12, I would check with your healthcare provider as to what that might look like. Um, but, uh, but yeah, you're, you should be fine and everybody should be checking, getting their blood work done annually anyway. Um, you know, looking at their B12, looking at their folate, their D, um, those are kind of the, the iron, um, making sure that they're checking the boxes. Um, while I support a plant-centered diet, I also support being very vigilant and aware of what's going on in our bodies. And we can't just assume that just because we're following one particular plan that it's all going to work out. That's not fair either. So, um, you know, as someone who do, I do see food as beneficial and can work wonders. Um, the body never ceases to amaze me. We just have to respect the fact that we can't just make decisions and let it go. We have to, we have to go visit our doctor. We have to do our blood work every year. Adulting is hard, but you know, we got to get it done. And if I may add something about the B12, sure. that actually comes from bacteria in the soil. And so when I was eating meat, I was actually deficient in B12 because our farming practices now basically kill all the bacteria in any soil life. So unless you're farming with regenerative agriculture or permaculture, a lot of people, regardless if you're an omnivore or any type of diet, you may, you're going to want to have those checked regardless because um, the way it's supposed to work is that animals are grazing and getting a little bit of soil and that is going into their muscles and then we're eating the animals but now with the way the soil and the agriculture works it's it's very unlikely <laughs> that we're getting enough. and i i just put in the facebook chat a link to a blog by dr michael clapper on b12 so your your folks can go read about it there That'll be great. Why don't we get that in the chat on the Zoom too, if we can, so everybody can get it. Um, so this is like, this is great. I, I, food for thought here. Um, you're making that connection for us, Dawn, between the genesis of our food, where it comes from, right? The environmental impact, the soil, all of that, and how yes. it ultimately impacts us. And we basically don't think of that, right? We basically open up a box or a can or whatever and it came from the supermarket, but hello, it had a long history, a long trek of becoming before it, we actually get there, which is why I love to grow our own food. Oh, I mm-hmm. say that, right? No, I basically like grow a few strawberries and blueberries and watermelon. <laughs> 
But, that's oh, awesome. That's, that's really right. good. I, I'm doing my best. Everybody, <laughs> welcome to Refresh. We're so glad that you're here. Today, we are with Dawn Hutchins. Yes, we are. And Heather Borders. Um, and, we're, and it's food for thought. We're talking about how we, in this time of holidays, when we really want to indulge in everything, can think about using our food as medicine to make us not only feel better, our bodies healthier, but our mind and moods even lifted. And Deb, let us know if whether you feel that you had enough answers, you have more questions. I'd like to ask everyone out there who's listening right now, uh, yes or no, you can write it in the chat or on Facebook, yes or no, do you feel like you are at your optimum weight or would you like to change your weight? Yes or no? I am voting first. Absolutely yes. I am stymied at the moment, um, so I uh, my answer is yes. Sherry, you can put in there too. Let's see. Yes, Sherry says yes too. Ladies, do you, are you at your optimum place? You're feeling good. Yes, I I am feeling okay with where I am. I. Um... I feel like for me that I kind of judge my activity level and how I'm feeling um, and my fitness level. And so I feel like overweight necessarily, I feel like I'm at an ideal weight for where I am, but I've recently picked running back up. I haven't run in probably 20 years. I recently broke a 10 minute mile because my daughter has been running. I was really proud of that. Go, Dawn, not, go. I know, awesome. even, Good for you. even in my, my 20s, I didn't do that. So I know that's not fast for some people, but, you know, I'm raising my 13-year-old daughter, so... Um, sure. It's good that she sees you do that. You, two, you guys, you could, you should do that together. That would be yeah, fantastic. Well, let me let me ask you another question, and then I want to get into our recipe because we don't have that much more time, and I want to make sure we can fit it all in. Um, intermittent fasting. Do you guys have a position on that? Okay, you do, Heather. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so again, it comes back to why, why do we want to do this? A lot of times people are doing this for weight loss reasons. And my first thought is, is it's not mandatory. Uh, it is more about what we eat than when we, when and how we eat it. Um, so if someone is eating a very low calorie dense food, you know, diet, um, then there, there really shouldn't be any issues. Most people will find a way to lose weight. That being said, I also don't think there's any harm in it. So long as we're getting in our caloric needs, so long as it's touching all the food groups and, um, there, there shouldn't be any issue. I have seen clients do very well on it. And a lot of that has to do with it. Just the schedule works for them. So, um, you know, intermittent fasting has a lot of different definitions. Um, so, you know, it, it really is a longer conversation of what that actually is defined as. But for the most part, it's eight hours a window of eating and um, you're still getting in all the calories you need. And, and again, if you're, if you're intermittent fasting and you're eating a standard American diet, it's probably not going to work. Uh, at least not long-term. So it has to be about what you're eating just as much as it is about the, the window. Interesting. Um, I actually met the medical partner of the guy who kind of put this forward. I found the science fascinating because what it spoke to, mm -hmm. um, and listen, you can read every single book, but about how insulin is really the culprit in our ability to gain and lose weight. And that we weren't designed to have our insulin constantly pumping all day long, like, you know, eat eight meals a day, all of that. And so when you restrict that insulin by not eating for an extended period of time, that that's really beneficial for all of your hormones and your enzymes and your um, organs. And, and it's just a healthier way to eat. And so I, I kind of bought into that. So I've been doing this for quite a while. And um, I... I don't know. I, it doesn't stop me from going back to check in to see whether that still is val is valuable. I've um, been doing I've been doing intermittent fasting off and on for many years, um, and I there I think there's emerging science about it. And I was actually talking to a friend that that said she told me, "Look, I've been fasting my whole life because, for religious reasons." Um, so I think there can be a lot of benefits for it. I mean, if you've learned about true north. 
Um, they have a fasting program there that um, has helped a lot of people. So I think there's a lot of science behind it. Um, but I wouldn't necessarily suggest anyone, you know, I would say talk to your doctor. And, and just to be clear for the sake of, of terminology, um, intermittent fasting is not fasting. Inter, you know, mm, intermittent yeah. fasting is just an eight hour window of eating. So mm -hmm. if, if by definition, fasting is no food, there's like no food. You can have water and some would argue like broth, um, clear broth, maybe tea, but fasting is no food. So, and that's different than starving because you, when you're starving, you now have, you've run through all your resources, your nutritional stores with fasting. You haven't done that yet. So it's still technically safe. You shouldn't do it un unless you're under medical care. Like Don mentioned at true North in California. Um, but you know, juice fast and whatever, it's not a fast. It's a low calorie, you know, liquid diet. And, um, or there's a, you know, anything that lowers your calorie is just a low calorie diet. And maybe there's some time scheduling component to it. So, um, you know, it, it's just important to note that it's not actual fasting. Right. Got it. And that's a great point. That's great. And should we be looking at ways to eliminate the toxins in our body through something drastic or just by eating better and then it moves itself out? Yeah, I think the key there, and I see this a lot, is um, it's really frustrating how slow healing can be because we want to wake up and, and lose 30 pounds in three months, and that's just not fair to our body. So it's about the day-to-day -day showing up, eating these foods that are low-calorie dense and full of nutrients and making those little choices every day. And over time, we will see benefits. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I'll shout out to a book I just read called Atomic Habits by yeah. James Clear. Hello, James. It's, it's, yeah. a, it's an amazing book and I love it. And if anybody, it's not just about diet, it's about and, and habits in general. And so, um, yeah, I don't see any rush to just get rid of toxins. Um, you know, if you're in that, dire of a need you need to go to true north in california um but <laughs> otherwise the rest of us we just need to eat plants as much as possible and if there's some clinical need then you know you need to seek right. out a dietitian or a doctor or something like now, that now, but let me one last question then we're gonna go to the recipe everybody hang in we're going to the recipe the recipe we can absolutely love to make and love to eat dairy why is there so much controversy around dairy Dairy, yes or no? Yogurt, yes or no? You want to take that, Dawn? <laughs> that's I'm, that's I, a whole I, other I, podcast. Yeah, <laughs> I was gonna say that's a whole other hour. <laughs> yeah, I know. I would say dairy is a massive no for me, like a really, really big no. Um, the entire China study, um, and if you have watched the documentary Forks Over Knives, dairy is the breast milk of another organism. Like we should not be drinking it. It causes a lot of issues. There are a ton of other ways to get calcium that have all of the vitamins and nutrients inherently in them to help with absorption, like magnesium. Um, I just don't see any need for dairy. Um, and cows don't just have milk yogurt. all the time. What about yogurt? I will occasionally do an unsweet um, non-dairy yogurt. Sometimes I made it myself, which is super easy. You just get a little probiotic cap and I'll mix it in with some coconut milk or something like that. Um, there's a bunch of recipes out there. But if I'm looking for the probiotic benefits of yogurt, I make kimchi. Um, I will look for other fermented foods that will naturally add more probiotics to um, enhance my, my gut flora. But as far as commercially processed dairy yogurt, I personally don't see a huge benefit in it. Um, what would you say, Heather? So I always start 30,000 foot view and, and, you know, as a dietitian, I get people who come to me with problems. Like they're like, I need to solve this problem. 
And my role is not to make them fit in some box. My goal is to help them with that problem. And there's unlimited ways to address those things, address those problems. And if someone, is, I have a, a lot of my, my clients, my, my kind of superpower area that I work in is food triggers and, um, you know, people with autoimmune diseases. And I just start with the top eight and the top eight allergens include dairy. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's fish, shellfish, dairy, soy, um, wheat, uh, nuts, and peanuts. And if someone is having issues, there's a really good reason to look at that top eight and dairy's right there. And unfortunately with triggers and sensitivities and certainly allergies, it is a zero sum game. There's no oh, little bits there. It's, it's none, like none, your body doesn't like it. So don't do it. Now, to be fair, if someone's telling me there's no issue with dairy, then there's no issue to, you know, in, really to encourage them to try that the, as the first strategy. Um, you know, it, is it going to, is it helpful? Probably not. But is it harmful? I don't know. You know, it's just everybody's different. That's so um, and, Yeah. And that is true. All right. Well, here we are, everybody. We promised some recipes. Well, here's a recipe. And you guys, if you want, make sure, Tiffany, we get some links. I think you did to their site. Um, but this is cranberry white chocolate oatmeal cookies. I might have to run downstairs right now. Uh, Dawn, are you taking us through this? Yes. So um, this is a recipe that I've done with kids. I've done with adults. You can make gifts by... Um, so DIY Christmas gifts where you just put layer all of the um, dry ingredients. You put a little tag on it. So I have a tag in there. You can get non-dairy white chocolate chips. There's even a link for you to make your own so if you should so choose to. Um, you can use cherries if you don't like cranberries, but it's got um, oatmeal in it and it's still indulgent. So it still has some brown sugar and some coconut palm sugar. And so this is, this is an indulgent recipe, um, but it's got some oatmeal in it and some coconut oil. Um, and these are really amazing for the holidays. They're so, so delicious. Um, and so, yeah, and I have the link for making the little gifts in there and everything. Where's the recipe? Let's just take a look at it. Keep going down to the bottom. I usually, I always put my recipe like way down at the bottom so we always if we write a blog post you've got to have a whole article so yeah uh, the images are beautiful though wow so much work to make this blog i'm always amazed at these food blogs because there's there's this seo old... says you, you have to have at least 500 words i think right now oh. um so yeah the there's the ingredients for the dry so you would layer those and i think below the recipe there's a picture i of the um layered jar and then all you add is um, some vanilla. Oh, that's cool. Some oh, I see. Coconut Go ahead. Let's oil. See the jar. Let's yep. See the jar. This looks so pretty. And there's the jar. Okay. That's yeah. Really pretty. And then you, this is so interesting. You add a little bit of club soda, and that will basically be the replacement of an egg. And my daughter actually likes using um, club soda in her bake. She's a really big baker. And she says it makes everything moist and fluffy. And she, that's like her favorite thing to use in baking instead of an egg. Um, and so this is a, this is a great recipe. Even my mother-in-law, who is definitely not plant-based whatsoever. And I think she prides herself on her traditional baking over the holidays she actually likes these cookies okay do we have a way for everyone let me just see so that we go back down i'm going to go back to that that's beautiful so you give those as gifts yeah and then all we do is put in so you just put it there'll be a little label on there that you wrap around and the label is at the bottom i think that you can download going down um Yep, there it is. So you can um keep going down and that shows you what there's the label so you can print those out um, and then all the people have to do is just melt some coconut oil. Everybody has vanilla and some club soda, and then they can make their cookies and that's all they need. That's really cool. I love that. Yeah. 
Yeah, I did that with the kids in, in some of our cooking classes and they've got to bring a jar home to their parents and it was a lot of fun. That's really great. We'll make sure everybody yeah. has access to that. Um, listen, I want to thank you both as we are out of time. For, obviously, this has been a very easy conversation. Lots and lots of questions. You're both so knowledgeable um, and facile with the information. You both live the lifestyle. You've both seen results and have been personally impacted. Um, love to continue the conversation with you. Invite our community mm -hmm. to definitely check out each of their websites. I am sure they would be they would welcome the opportunity to hear from anybody who would have some questions for them. So thank you, Heather. Thank you, Dawn. A happy, very happy holiday. You will definitely be hearing from me. Um, that is for sure. And <laughs> just want to remind everybody, Generation W, listen, all things being equal, we're planning on reconnecting for the theme of connection on April 1st. After two long years, we are planning on coming back together. So mark your calendars. There it is. We have our early bird ticket deal right now. Connection. I think that's a very holiday ish. Very nice, Katie. Mm. Generation, if you, for information, gen, genwnow.com. We hope you'll be with us at this point in time. Uh, you know, how, well, I'm just gonna, I'm just, I'm just going for it like I normally do. Optimistically, we will all be together and it will be fabulous. That part I know. Um, and we will mitigate and take, make sure that we're healthy as I spoke in the beginning as needs be. And next week to conclude the 2021 season of Refreshed, we do it on a very positive, upbeat note. We know this is a time of stress. As much as we love the holidays, right? Whether you have kids, parents, work, home to take care of. There's always things to get done at the last minute. It could be a very stressful time. There's triggers around a lot of emotional things that happen around the holidays. We want to end it on a high note. We will do that with the inimitable, amazing, beloved Deb Levy, um, the positive guide for a joyful holiday. How about that? We'll see you on the 15th at noon for our final refresh of the year. Of course, check out any of our wonderful conversations on our YouTube page. And until then, everybody have a very happy December 1st, the rest of a happy Hanukkah, and we'll see you in two weeks. Take care. Thanks again, Heather and Don. We really appreciate it. Bye. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank you.